Hi guys, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm here with Julie Rogerson, who is our cake design team member. Yep. Um, so I'm filming here from the Katie Sue studio in South Shields, England, um, and we're filming from the cake decorating page. So today uh, we are celebrating Sugar Button's birthday week. So we've brought out a brand new mould, which is the lamb mould, and it's absolutely gorgeous. It tastes it's just... really lovely. So this is the lamb mould. I'll just show it here. So this is brand new and it's free with any sugar buttons order. It's... There you go, and I'll show an example as well. There you go. So this is one that uh, Doreen's done. So this is with every sugar buttons order you get one of these for free and plus 10% off the entire range. So Julie has been with us for how many years is it? Three years Three now. Three years. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so she's done lots of wonderful cakes for us, uh, including this one here, which has got owls on the sugar buttons range. Yep. Yeah. I'll be using that one again today yeah. as well. <laughs> so this will be uh, in the demo today. So this is the sugar buttons owl. So this is 10% off, and then you get the free lamb mould with that one as well. So, as well as this, we'll be looking at this mould. So there really is a massive range of moulds we're using. So I've got the continuous tree bark as well, which is uh, really recently new, and it is, it's lovely and it's continuous as well. And rope pill barder. So this is one of Kerry's moulds and it creates a piped effect which is really handy. If yeah, it's really good to put around the bottom of a cake. Yes. Really good. A uh, dog mould which has been really popular in the last couple of days um, and he is one of my favourites actually I think maybe because I'm a bit of a dog lover. Yeah, me so too. He is, yeah, he is really gorgeous. I love that one. I'd do it black because it's got Labrador so yes. that's what I'd do it in. <laughs> uh, the wood panel mould. And then finally, I've got a cat mould and a rabbit mould as well. So these will all be used in the demo today by Julie. So Julie, do you want to just go through yeah, our Yeah, absolutely. Cake? So we're going to start off, we've done um, a hill effect with the patchwork mould um, and then lots of animals in a kind of a, a spring farmyard effect. So we're going to start off first of all using the patchwork mould um, to create that hill Effect, just to give it a little bit of texture. So we're going to start off just kneading our sugar paste. It's just um, just general ordinary sugar paste which I've added some tylo powder to um, and coloured with um, an olive green effect. So what fondant is it that you're using? Just plain um, any brand, just normal white white sugar paste, white fondant. Um, I'm just going to roll that out a little bit well, I've got my corn flour, I'm going to dust my mould. Really important to use corn flour in your moulds, um, just to stop anything from sticking. Okay, I'm just going to quickly roll this into a similar size to the patchwork mould. Because we're only using it to give an impression for this effect, it doesn't have to be exactly the same size. And you don't have to worry about getting each panel the same thickness as well, because of the effect that we're looking for. So then flip your sugar paste over, lay it on top of the mould and just give it a press with your fingers just so that it gets a really good deep impression of the pattern and then once it's on there nice and secure we can just give it a small roll over with your rolling pin okay. flip the paste over and then you just reveal your pattern so do you find it best to use uh, like colours to colour your fondant or actual like coloured fondant pre-coloured? it depends I if I'm only using a small amount, I quite often colour them, but if I'm using either red or black sugar paste, I find that much easier to buy because of the amount of colour that you need to use. Um, it can affect the consistency of the sugar paste or the fondant. So for the darker colours, I prefer to buy ready-made. The advantage of using the colours, you can vary the shades yeah. so much as well. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to, if you can see on the cake here, we're just going to create some hills. I'm going round. So for that I'm just going to use a um, pizza cutter and we're just going to cut out a kind of just a random hill shape, doesn't have to be anything in particular with that. 
and then in true Blue Peter fashion I've got some I made <laughs> earlier because you don't want to stop watching me making lots and lots of hills okay so we're just going to line that up next to it and create another hill going around this way again it doesn't have to be any particular shape and just make sure they match up together so this would be, I think, a perfect cake for spring or maybe yeah, Easter cake? Yeah, for spring Easter cakes, um, for yeah. anybody who likes animals really, yes. particularly farm animals. Yeah, well there's so many sugar buttons, moulds. Absolutely, there's lots to choose from. Various. You could even do for um, a young child, um, mm -hmm. yeah. that kind of effect. So to make the top hill that's just joining these together, I'm just going to pop my sugar paste over the top. And you should be able to feel where the top of that hill is. Okay, and we're just going to follow it round and the same that way as well it doesn't have to be too precise though so don't worry if you chop any little bits off okay so that should fit nicely like a little jigsaw. in between like a little <laughs> jigsaw and because the sugar paste is soft if you've got a little gap you can just mould it a little bit to shape okay and then just cut a little hill over the top as well there we go and um, for the top edge of the um, the hills just press the sugar paste down just kind of in a little rocking motion just to soften the edges um, because obviously hills are rolling you don't want to have a sharp edge for the top of your hill okay and then we're just going to use another colour just to finish this hill off so just a straight line across like so and then just follow that down again just softening the edges at the top you could of course use this without using um, the mould yes absolutely I just thought it gives it a little bit of a texture yeah. just looks quite nice okay because uh, yeah this mould isn't in the sugar buttons range no, but, no so I guess you could use um, like, a, like just plain hills with the sugar button the moulds on yes. top as an alternative yeah, absolutely but you know it does add a bit more texture to it it does it? just a little bit more interest so I'm going to start applying the hills onto the cake now so just picking them up in the order that you've done them a little bit of water around the edges you could use edible glue or piping gel but when you're using the, the sugar paste freshly out of the mould it's perfectly fine just to use water we're going to leave a gap on the side here because that's where our gate is going to fit okay so just spin that round I'm just going to leave a gap there and just press it against the side of your cake like so and then you pick up the next piece of your jigsaw puzzle again just a little bit of water so do you find that it holds it very well then it's it rather does. than glue yeah it does um, and it's not quite as messy as glue glue can get a bit too sticky and a bit messy yeah. like I say if you, it's something that you've had um, that's dried water tends not to be mm. as good to stick it with and um, then I would tend to go for either a piping gel or an edible glue mm. or even some royal icing depending yeah. on what it is if it's one of the sugar button animals perhaps and if you w were pre-making these yeah um, of course you'd have to figure out how to get the curved effect as well and um, how would you apply them with edible glue yes yeah, yeah. and how long do you think they'd last out of um, like before pre-making them if you were pre-making them if it was to go on a cake sort of that same day, like I pre-made some first, mm. if you just wrap them in a little bit of cling film that will help to keep them soft and um, ready to apply. But for example with the animals, if you were painting them and you wanted them to go a bit harder first, just leave them for maybe half an hour or so just to harden up a little yeah. bit. Um, but again, if you'd pre-made them in advance a day or two in advance so they were really hard, I would use either piping gel or oil icing right. to attach them to the cake. Okay, so we'll just finish with that little bit at the end. give your hill effect okay and then you could just patch in another little hill I've scrumpled them up now but you could just add another hill just in the middle just to finish that off neatly around the back okay so the next thing we're going to make is the fence to fit into the middle so for that one we're going to use the wood panel mold and again just some brown sugar paste that I've added some Tyler's powder to just to keep it a little bit firmer for shaping Okay, so I'm just going to need that. We're going to do exactly the same thing for this mould that we did with the patchwork hill mould um, in that we're just going to roll it out, use the wood as an impression mat and then we're going to cut out some fence panels. Okay, so, just... so is this 
you've coloured this one, have you? Yes, this one, I've coloured this one just with um, a gel colour. What gel? What brand did it use? It was, I believe this one was the Pro Gel. Um, I think it's Rainbow Dust right. Pro Gel, just in the brown colour. But there are lots and lots of different varieties um, of browns. Yeah. You can get chestnut browns and all kinds of different ones. So again, a good dusting of cornflour. You don't want anything to stick. So as an alternative to cornflour, what else would you Yeah, uh, as suggest? an alternative, you can use Trex. Um, that's quite good, particularly with intricate moulds. Uh, these ones are fine because they're... They're just like a, a panel, but the really intricate ones, you can find it. it's a little bit easier to use Trex. Um, if you do have trouble with moulds, uh, you, you pay sticking into the mould. You can also pop them in the freezer for about five minutes, um, just to freeze the paste, and then it will pop straight out. Yeah, I actually do that. Yeah, <laughs> I do, depending on what it is. Yeah. Sometimes with the really intricate lettering, yeah. it's really good for that. So again, I've just rolled it onto there, flip it over, and then Fab. peel it off. And there you have your panels. I think that one's a really handy mould as well because you could really use it in pretty much I think any... Yeah, I use this absolutely all the time. It's one of my favourites, the wood. Um, you can use it for little wooden boxes. Yes. But um, I've used it on a treasure chest before. Anything that's got wood. Um, I quite often use it there to do garden fences um, yeah. around the bottom of the cake. Yeah. If I'm doing like a gardening theme. So all I'm doing is just cutting along the line there just to give us our individual fence panels and we're going to need two upright pieces one at each side and a little crossover bit to go in the middle so that's my two for my fence pieces and then I'm going to cut one of these in half lengthways like this just to make a, a thinner piece of wood stick into my knife there <laughs> you can use the pizza roller as well that works really well Okay, so to make the fence panel, we're going to have a top piece and it's going to be joined, so I'm going to cut one of these in half. We will need to measure it once we get it actually onto the cake to make sure it's the right size. It depends how much of um, a gap you've left in your hill. Okay, and then we would have a connecting piece at the bottom, like so. And then this bit is going to go across the middle. But what we'll do is we'll measure it on the cake first and then we can cut it out to the proper size. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to measure it on the cake first just to see the height of the fence because obviously you don't want it too big. And you can see there it's really tall. So I'm just going to chop the top bit off, just about an inch or so off the top. And then measure it next to your other piece to make sure you get them the same size because you don't want one taller than the other. There we go. And then again, just with a little bit of water or with edible glue if you prefer, just a little line along there. And then we can attach that to the cake. So if you took it right next to the hill there. Okay, and then we're going to do the same at the other side. I think I might have left a bigger gap this time than I did on the first cake. Okay, so again, Pop that one there, and then we'll just measure to see if this one actually fits. But no, I think it needs to be a little bit longer. So what I'll do is just chop one of the other panels down. There we go, just chop a strip off. I mean, it's so easy, isn't it, to recreate absolutely. that wooden effect? It wouldn't matter if you made oh, no. 20 mistakes. No, <laughs> absolutely not. Not that it was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> just a, mis a mismeasurement. Yeah. Okay, so another way you can do it is straight onto the cake. Just pop a little bit of water and then position it on your cake and then just chop off the excess. So we're going to do that one along the bottom, like so. And then with your knife, just trim that to fit. So would you do this on... Is your cake like, is it hard, the fondant, or is it quite soft? When did you? I tend to, when I'm making my cakes at home, like my customer cakes, um, I tend to cover them the day before I decorate them, just so yes. that you don't accidentally put any little chips or holes in your cake as you're working. Yeah. Um, but you could put it on fresh if you're being really careful. Okay, and then just trim that one the same. And then, as I say, we're going to have another piece going. So I'm just going to pop some water straight on the cake there and find where the piece that I was using for the diagonal. Now for this one, 
because it's going into the corner we're going to just chop like a little bit like an arrow head so it's going to chop a little bit off each edge there just so that it will fit mm -hmm. into the into the corner there of the fence so that you don't have a big gap okay so i'm going to pop one in there feed it all the way up to the top and then i'm going to do the same again and put the top here but actually on the cake itself so trim it that way and then that way as well there we go Move that little bit of paste. There we go. Lovely. That's made your little gate to get into the fields. So then the next piece that we're going to do is we're going to do the rope border just around the top edge of the cake here. That's really ideal for if you've made um, if your fondant doesn't go right down to the bottom, or if you've got any little folds and creases. Sometimes when you've smoothed yeah. it, you get a little bit of a wrinkle at the bottom, and so that makes it really ideal. So I'm going to use the rope border mold this one here and I'm going to choose to use the middle one here obviously there is the larger one and the really narrow one but I tend to use the middle one more often um, I think that's a really good size to go around the bottom of a cake okay, so again remembering to dust it with corn flour because that's the bit I always forget to do and then end up, <laughs> yes. end up with sugar paste sticking and not coming out properly okay. so so this is just the same colour green that I used to cover the bottom tier and the board. So the size of cakes that I've used, for the bottom tier I've used an 8 inch round cake, but 8 inch round cake which is 5 inches deep. The top tier is a 6 inch round cake which again is 5 inches deep and it's just sitting on a 12 inch board. So it gives you plenty of room at the front there if you were doing it for um, somebody's birthday or Easter, any kind of... Um, a celebration you could put a message on the board then you've got plenty of space so I'm just working the sugar paste into the mold okay I'm just stretching it along if you find that your fingers get a little bit sticky just rub them in a little bit of excess corn flour I tend to have that all over the board <laughs> so it's yeah. really useful just for dipping your fingers into and um, to help okay so again just squishing the paste into the mold trying to make sure you don't go over the edges just keeping the paste within if you find that you've gone over the edge a little bit just show you that look all you need to do is just pull the paste back again okay and just keeps it within that way you don't have any stray little bits of sugar paste sticking out okay so all the way to the bottom so have you added anything to the fondant any? Yeah, this is still just got a little bit of um, Tylo powder in. Yeah, just a little bit of Tylo. Just strengthens it a little bit. Okay, so what I'm going to do now to release from the mould is just flex the mould, and as you can see, it, it's almost falling out. It's really good. There we go. And so yeah, so that's if you know I can't personally pipe. <laughs> no, um, um, it's not one of my strong points. I must admit. <laughs> so yeah, it's just a really dead quick, easy way of. It is. And the thing I like it about it as well, not only for the being easier than piping for me personally, is the fact that you can use the same colour sugar paste that you used to cover your cake. Yes, because that would be very hard if to you match were, up. If yeah. you were trying to match that up, um, colouring the fond the, the royal icing, that would be so tricky. Yeah. So again, I'm just rolling a thin sausage. I'll just pop a little bit more corn flour in, just to be careful. <laughs> It is quite easy to forget, isn't it? It is. Um, I'm, I'm normally okay remembering the first time. It's when I have to go <laughs> back and use the mould again the second time. I forget to put it back in. It's definitely worth putting it in, though. Cause Absolutely. Because it pops out. Yeah, nice it releases it so much, so much easier. So again, just working your way along, just with your fingers. When we're using some of the more intricate moulds, you can use a, a Dresden tool or something to poke it into the edges. But these ones, you can just use your fingers quite easily. So if you find you've got a bit of a build-up with too much paste, just push it along until you get to the end and then you can just pull that bit off like that. And of course, like the more you mod, you use the moulds, I think the easier Absolutely. you become with the technique yes. of using them. Yeah, definitely. And knowing how much paste to use yes. as well. Um, when you first start off, a lot of times you use a really big piece of paste, but the more you use them, the more you can gauge. Okay, so then that just releases on the mode like that. Okay, I think from memory we needed three of these. 
Let's get a bit more paste. It's just a really nice, quick and easy way of finishing off the, the bottom of a cake. There's a quick sausage. Again, I'm just using some of the excess corn flour. Because I know there's already corn flour in there, I'm just topping it up really. Just make sure if you're using a makeup brush like I am, make sure it's a new one. <laughs> yes. don't, don't use it for your blusher first and then no. try using it in your sugar paste. Not and very same hygienic. with craft, I think, paintbrushes, because yes. paints carry, um, I think, like toxins. Yes, yeah. If you're using moulds for crafts and for cake decorating, you need to have a separate mould for each. Keep them separate. Oh, this is what I've done. Do your cake. Cake moulds first, and then, yeah, and then, and then, then do you one craft. Yeah. But then it's craft forever then. Yes, then you would have to keep it just for craft. <laughs> there we go. Oops, that one's oh, straight, straight out. Straight, straight away. Out. See how easy they come out without sticking. Yeah, there I think go. when putting them in the freezer, I think it really does depend which yeah, mould it moulds like these you wouldn't need to put in the freezer really. No. So again, to pop around the cake, I'm just going to put just a thin layer of water, just a thin line going around just to hold it in place. All the way around. Again, if you prefer, you can use edible glue or a little bit of piping gel. It's just to hold it down. Okay, and then I'll just trim off the edges. The one thing you do have to be careful with this is making sure that you put all the pieces on the same way up because there is, not necessarily right and a wrong way, but just make sure you keep them the same way. You choose which one you prefer. Okay, and then we just lay that on. That's really, yeah, uh, finished. Finished the edge And it off. just finishes it off really well. Okay. If you find it lifting a bit, just pop a little bit more water under, particularly at the edges there. And then you can quite easily match up the next piece. So do you use this mould a lot then? I do, okay. yes. Yeah. Yeah, I love this one. Like I say, it just gives it a nice neat finish around the edge. And quite often I do use, like I say, I do use the same colour sugar paste that I used to cover the tear. But on this occasion, for the design, I wanted this to give kind of like a little bit of a grass effect for where the, um, the trees sit in and the animals are sitting. So for this piece, just to patch in at the edge here, start off at one side. And then when you meet up there, just trim with a sharp knife. Oh, that's nailed perfectly. There. <laughs> and it just meets up really nicely, then you can't see the join at all. Okay, so ah. the next thing we're going to do is to make the tree. So for the tree, we're going to use the continuous bark mould. Um, before that one was released, I used to use my dressing tool and mark all the, yes. the lines and the grooves and things, but this just makes it so much quicker yes. and easier. Instant. It is, definitely. Instant bark. So, for the bark, I'm going to make it a little bit different to the... I'm sorry, I'm whistling. I'm going to make it a little bit different from the fence panel, so I'm just going to add a little bit of black just to give it a darker shade for the brown. Rather than adding different gel colours or adding more of the same gel colour, I'm just going to add some black in just to give a different turn. So yeah, the, because it's continuous, it's really great because you can match them up like jigsaws. Yes. So, yeah, you know, absolutely. if you wanted to make a, an absolutely massive cake, you yep. could, and it could be continuous with seamless. Yes, um, one of my recent cakes that I did for yourselves, um, I used the continuous bark mold around the whole tier, yes. for the bottom tier, for the, when we did the owl. So just kneading that through. Now because it's a tree, it doesn't necessarily have to be completely coloured. What you can do is just leave a little bit of the black not mixed in and then it will give sort of some shadows and it just adds mm. to the texture really. Okay, so again I'm just going to roll that out. Now we don't have to use the whole mould for this because it's only going to be a tree. It's only a small piece. So what I'm looking for, more than the width, is I'm looking for the height. So I want the, the sugar paste to be a similar height to the mould, okay, but it doesn't necessarily have to cover the full width of the mould. Okay. Let's flip that over into the mould, and again, with just with your fingertips, just press down 
really hard and that picks up all the textures in the mould then it gives you a really good deep effect for the markings okay and then once that's secure in place you can go over with your rolling pin just to make sure that that's really well marked okay and then flip your mould over as you can see it comes out straight like that okay if you've got some corn flour on there you can just dust it off with your brush I think that's um one of the reasons why a lot of people use um use the tracks tracks yes yeah. to save that another thing you can do is when you've finished decorating your cake which i do quite often if you get either cornflower marks or um, icing sugar marks anything like that on your cake you can actually just use a steamer and just steam around it and that lifts all, right. off all the that. marks yes so like with this one where there's some little bits there in the grooves if you just use a steamer um it just steams the colors right. all the paste off yeah it's really good um, another way, if you haven't got a steamer, you could just paint it with a bit of vodka, or, right. yeah, or any clear really? alcohol. Yes, yeah. If you just brush over some clear alcohol, all right, and it removes all the the um, ice and sugar or corn flour oh. marks. So I'm just going to roll a small sausage, and this is going to give our tree some um, some volume, okay, some thickness, because we don't really want a flat tree. Okay, so I'm just going to roll a sausage about the same height. And I'm going to trim the mould on both sides, like so. And then, like I say, we just want a column like this. It doesn't have to be too big. Okay. And then flip that over. I'm going to lay the sausage on, like so. And just squish it into place because we don't want it to be too rounded we just want to give it a little bit of added trim it at the bottom at the top I'm going to trim it a little bit short because I don't want to see that particularly poking out of the top of the mould and then I'm just going to add some water down the edges like so and we're just going to fold it in a little bit like if you were making a sausage roll I'm just going to fold it like so and then Let's put a bit more water around that edge. I'll just fold that one over as well. Okay. And give it a squish. And there you have your tree, or well, just the trunk. Again, I'm going to add some water. If you find it doesn't stick very well with the water, because this one obviously is a little bit heavier than the, the patchwork hills wear and the rope border mould, you can obviously use a little bit of um, piping gel if you need to. So we're going to decide where you want your tree. Let's pop it here. Okay. And we're just going to leave it sticking up the top. A little bit there, you don't have to trim it at the top. It gives you a nice tall tree that way. And just press it against, okay, just to secure it in place. Okay. And then for the tree, obviously we need some branches. So we're going to use, I think this is one of the sugar buttons molds. Yes, this yeah. is, yeah. So we're going to use the owl mould for this one. This one's really good because you get your branch and you get some leaves as well, which are really, really useful. Yes. It's such one. a big mould, this one as well. It is a really big mould. Yes, it's lovely that you get the three, three different sizes so you can do a whole family of owls. Yes. Really nice. So again, remembering with the corn flour, I'm going to brush out some of that excess. Like so. Okay, and just like we did with the rope border mould, we're just going to roll a sausage, like so, and just drop it into your mould, and you're just going to squeeze it along. Actually, no, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to do the leaves. <laughs> that would be helpful. So, it doesn't matter which colour of the greens that you use, I'm going to choose to use the dark green. It's going to give that a good knead again, because it has dried out a little bit while it's been sitting there. One good thing to use if you when you're decorating your cakes to store your sugar paste in between using them if you're using different colours in different moulds is just to wrap them in a little bit of cling film or pop them in a plastic bag um, and it stops it drying out okay so that's brought it back to life okay what we're going to do is if you see in the mould here we've just got some little leaf some leaves that are attached to the branch we're just going to roll a small ball of the green sugar paste and then I'm going to pop it into like a little cone shape so just press down on one edge and that slots into the mould there, just press it in with your fingers 
If you find it's a little bit fiddly to get into with your fingers, you can actually use just um, a Dresden tool and just poke, poke that in. Because when you're using different colours in a mould, what you want to make sure is that the colour doesn't bleed over the edge into the grooves where you want your different colour. I'm just going to press that one in and then the same again at this side, so into a ball and then a small kern, slot it in and like I said you can just use it there with your Dresden tool. Now I think with this mould I've also seen people just do them brown yes, as well. Yeah, you can so do, I think yeah. Yeah, it's really up to you how it you is. want to use yeah. the moulds. We're going to add some more leaves anyway because you can use the leaves there. Okay, so again, just a sausage. Oops. And then press that in. So when you go, if you've used a different colour, when you get to that colour, just make sure you press it on top there just to join the two together. Like so. You just need to watch your fingers on this one because you... The owls are quite close there. Okay. So again, just press it down onto that colour, all the way along to the bottom, and then just tear off the excess paste. Make sure you press it in well, so that it's picking up that impression of the branch. Okay, so that's all in. And then again, flexing the mould. And as you can see, as you flex it, it's almost dropping out. Yeah, you can tell you've, you've got cornflower. Absolutely. <laughs> and you can also tell the, the quality of the moulds um, because the, the silicon is so soft yes. and very, very flexible. Sorry, do it that way. Very flexible. Um, it just helps to release them from the moulds so much more easily than some of the stiffer silicon that you can get. Okay, so again, I'm just going to dust off where I got a little bit excited with my cornflower. <laughs> Trying to err on the side of caution. Okay, so I'm going to turn my mould over my branch and I'm just going to pop a line of water along, just remembering those little bits there. And then I'm going to fix that to the cake. Whoops, my tree's going a little bit wonky. <laughs> so again, if that happens, if it keeps happening, just use a little bit of piping gel to hold it in place properly. And then the tree is just going to the branch that's next to it there. All the way along and that's going to have the owl sitting on okay and then you can do another branch coming the other way as well um so in exactly the same way this time we could maybe do it just with the brown color and then you can see the different effects that you can do so again just into a sausage shape just to add a little bit more corn flour and press it in. So once you get to these bits obviously you're going to need to move your paste over just so that it fits into the mould there look and then go back. So you're just following the shape of the mould really again just squeeze some paste back into that little bit there and then carry on going. If when you put in the mold, paste into your mould, like here, just lift that up and show you, you might be able to see, this bit here is a little bit, um, it goes in a bit, it's got a little bit of a dip, it's not quite as full. So all I'm going to do is use a little bit of paste, just into a little ball or a sausage, and I'm going to backfill that. Just press it on and it just sticks to the rest. Okay, so again, making sure that you haven't got any paste spilling out over the edges. And then give your mould a good flex, like so, and then out it goes. Okay. Now if you decided that you wanted this branch to be a little bit shorter, you could just trim a little bit off, and that way you can vary branches so they're not all looking exactly the same. And just a little bit of water again, and this time we'll stick, we'll maybe go for a lower branch this time. And just press onto your cake like that. Okay, so now you've got your two branches. If you want to add some additional leaves, okay, we can use the leaf part. Let's move that brown. Again, just popping in a little bit of plastic to keep it soft while we work. So I'm going to use the same green that I used on the first branch. 
again just knead it to soften it a little bit make sure you've got some corn flour I know when I dusted it I did get carried away and it went everywhere so I'm sure that's fine okay, a little ball like so and again just press now you can see that one's far too big you can tell when you get it onto the mould itself it's far too big so just take a little bit off and it makes it easier because the less paste that you have excess the better really okay. so press it down with your fingers just scrape off any excess that you have and then make sure your paste stays inside like so make a bit of a flex and then that should just drop out there we go so there you have little leaves and then you can just put them wherever you want on your branches so again you could make as many of these as you wanted if you wanted extra branches you could uh, remembering to leave room because we are actually going to put the owl on here as well Okay, so as I say, you can just carry on going and make as many leaves as you want to go on there, but we'll just stick with the one lot for now and we'll move on to another mould. So the next mould that we're going to use is, we're going to start with the animals, I believe, I think we're at the point now, yeah? Yeah, so uh, yeah. sugar so button. sugar button animals yeah. now, okay, there are lots, yes. <laughs> there are lots. I've picked the ones that are the more farmyard themed, yes. but there's all sorts in that range, isn't there? There really Lots is. of different... Yeah, and the, uh, you've chosen cat and a dog, which yep. is yeah, two of my favourites, so yep. I have cat and a dog. <laughs> oh, and the owl as well. And the yeah, yep. dog's been really popular um, at the moment, I just think, so lovable. Yeah, absolutely. As I say, I've got a Springer Spaniel, so for me, I would probably choose a liver and white Springer Spaniel, so I'd probably go for those colours. For this cake, I've actually chosen to do um, a black and white dog, purely because along the themes of a border collie, sort of a sheep dog, yes, yeah. that sort of colourings. Um, but first of all, while I've got this mole out, I'm going to do the owl to go on the branch. Um, I'm going to choose to do the middle sized owl, just because it fits the size of the cake better, I think. Um, but as I say, you could do a whole family like I did on the owl cake over there. Yeah. So you've got the mum and the babies, which yep. is dead cute. Absolutely. I think the sugar buttons range, it just is. It's, it's They are the so cute, really whimsical. Yes. Really nice, I love them. So excuse the rustling, <laughs> I'm just getting a bit of white. Okay, so for the owl, I'm going to do a brown owl. We're going to do the wings and the feet, or claws, I don't know, talons. <laughs> I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. Feet. <laughs> yes, we're going, to, we're going to do the wings and the feet in um, the darker brown, and then we're going to do the body in a paler brown. So I'll start off with this one, I'm just going to roll out a small ball and then into a kind of an oval shape, sort of a small sausage and that's just going to make this first wing here. So we're going to press it in lightly, Oops. Okay. what I then tend to do is I put my finger here because it's going to be quite a straight edge and I just push it this way as well, if you can see that there, just so it's right inside the lines here. Okay. I'm going to do the same at the other side because again when you're using more than one colour in a mould you don't want the edges to bleed together and it, can, it creates all kinds of weird patterns so I'm just going to put my thumb there just to stop it going in and scrape off that excess okay so that's those, we're going to repeat the same thing for the feet but with a smaller ball this time your finger here just to stop it from moving. Oops. Sometimes it sticks to your fingers. If that happens, just get a little bit of excess corn flour onto your fingers. Same with the other foot. And what we're going to do for the eyes, we're going to actually paint the eyes on. So I'm going to make the eyes in white to start with and then paint the detail on later. So but I guess if you, you could also paint on the wings as well. You, you could paint on the wings if you wanted to, yeah. So to do these, we're just going to take a small ball of white, just try it in the mould and see, as you can see that one really is probably too big because it's going to go over the edges. Okay, so we need to take that out, take some off, and then drop it back in again. That's a better size. And again, you can use your Dresden tool just to make sure it's in there securely and that it's not perking over the top of the beak okay. and then the same for the other side for the other eye 
press that in. There we go. And then we're just going to fill the middle with a pail of brown. So I'm going to take some white, a little bit of the brown, and just knead them together just to give a paler colour. I've seen so many of the owls done in so many colours. Yeah, I, you know. I don't think you have to be particularly botanically correct. No, you? I don't no, think I've seen pink, really pink owls, blue owls. Yeah. They're really nice for kind of baby showers. Mm -hmm. You can do sort yes. of pastel shades um, and neutral shades for baby showers. Owls are really popular. Okay, so we'll just, again, just join it to the other colours. Give it a good press. Okay, and then flex in the mould and empty pops. Okay, oops, so there's your owl. As I say, we're just going to paint on a little bit of yellow and a little bit of black for the, eye, for the eyes. I tend to just let them dry for a few minutes, so I'm just going to put that one to one side and we'll do all the painting together at the end. So that's your owl. Um, the next one we'll go on to is the cat, because the cat's on the top tier as well. For the cat, I'm going to do a ginger and white variety of cat. Proper farm cat. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Tom cat. So just a little bit of paste that I've coloured. Um, I actually cheated a little bit with this one. I used, um, it wasn't just one colour. Um, I had some of the skin tone that I made up for the uh, sheep left over. So what I did, I just added a little bit of, I think it was a sunflower yellow, so a bit of an orangey yellow colour just for this. But you can use any colours to make the cats, mm -hmm. um, because let's face it, they come in all different colours. <laughs> Absolutely. So for this one, I'm just going to give it a dust with the cornflower. Okay. And we're going to... Use white for the face, and then we're going to use some orange for the paws and the ears, and we'll have a little uh, orange tail, I think, with a white tip to the end. So I'm going to do all my white bits first, and then I'm going to move on to the colour. doesn't really matter which order you do it in, it's just preference, the way I find it easier. So the tip of the tail can go in first. You can see on the actual mould, I'll just take that out, you can see there on the mould, it's a bit textured at one end, so you can see where the tip of the tail is if you want to use more than one colour. It's quite easy to spot and get it in the right place. And so. this cat also comes with a little little fish. Yes. As well. It does. So if you want to make the cat some, some supper. Yes. I <laughs> used um, the owl and the cat mould on a cake once. I did um, an owl and pussy cat themed. So I did them a little pea green boat and I, yes, did, I used the fish. I have seen that, yeah, yes. Yeah, I used the fish for that one. Okay, so we'll use the white again for the face. So just pressing it in, again making sure that you don't go over. Although I suppose really with the animals, the fur, it mingles into itself yes. anyway, doesn't it? Yeah. So I suppose it doesn't matter too much on these ones. You can get a little bit of overlap if you want. So make sure his cheeks are in there. Okay. And then we will do, in fact I think we'll give him white paws, white paws and orange legs, I think. And maybe a bit of a white tummy. I can't remember what I did on that one. <laughs> I've got a ginger cat so it'll look just like mine. It will. <laughs> so just making sure when you get the paws, you can see there, they go right down. Okay, so you need to get your dressing tool right down into the bottom of the mould there to make sure that you get the colour in the right place. There you go. Okay, and the same for the other feet. Now these ones are separate on this side, so you've got a bigger paw here, and then a smaller one on the inside. So again, just using your Dresden tool. Dresden tools are fab, I use them for everything. Okay, and then just a little tiny ball for the middle one. So that's just going to drop down into there and then this time we'll have to press it downwards into the mould just to pick up that paw detail. And on this one here I can see it hasn't gone quite to the very end so I'm just going to add a little bit more white paste in there just to make sure that it gets right to the very bottom. 
but again like I said with it being a cat with the cats or the dogs the fur does grow in all different directions so it would be perfectly fine I'm just going to give him a little bit of a white tummy as well so I'm just going to use a sausage I'm just going to flatten it a little bit like that and then add it into the mould and then we're going to fill all the rest with the orangey ginger colour just doing that together okay so we're going to start with thin sausage just for the tail detail just going over the white a little bit just to join it together oops it's coming out already there we go Let's squish that in any excess you can just push in there because we're doing all the rest of it in this colour anyway um, so knead it together And I'm just going to fill all the bits. Like so. This orange paste feels quite soft. I think I didn't put as much Tylo's powder in this one. There we go. And then we can just remove that excess when we get to the bottom there. There we go. And then again, just flexing the mould. Oops, it's gone over the edge. And then hopefully this will all come out in one piece with all the different colours attached. Okay. So sometimes, especially with these deeper moulds, you just have to use your Dresden tool a little bit just to help release. Like so. There we go. Now for these bits here, look where the white hasn't quite joined. I'll just lift that up so you can see. Just here, it's just kind of poking off a little bit. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of water just to make sure that that sticks in place. There we go. Like so. I think using the two different colours have really brought, brought them to life. Yeah. So again, we're going to add some detail with some colour, but we'll do that at the same time as the owl. Okay, so that's your cat. Now the dog is exactly the same, um, but what I've done this time, at this one, Another blue meat Peter moment where I prepared earlier. <laughs> I've done the dog just in white this time. And then, oops, wrong way around, it's upside down. I've done him just in white and I'm going to add some black detail to the ears and the tail. Um, and we'll just paint that one. So that is an alternative. You can use different colours in the moulds or you can make it all in one colour and then add detail to it later with paint. So I'll pop him there. And we have got a rabbit, I believe. I don't know what I've done with the rabbit, there he is. It's a different mark, is it? <laughs> yeah. I've got to hit yes. Yeah, so Alright. Okay, so I'm going to need a bit of white for the rabbit. Again, this one I'm going to do all in white and then dust some um, pink areas for the feet. So the rabbit also comes with a little carrot? The rabbit comes well. with a carrot and it also comes, you can see there, with a really nice little carrot bottom. Uh, carrot bottom. A rabbit <laughs> bottom there, which is really nice, particularly like on Easter cakes, it's really good on cupcakes if you do a grass or a mud effect yes. and just have that on the top as if it's going down his little rabbit hole. It's a really cute mould. So, it's dusting, but today we're just going to use the whole rabbit. Now, the interesting thing about this one, the ears come separately, so again you can use the ears um, for a separate project if you wanted to. You could always do, I don't know, maybe a, a, a bit of a cross animal. You could cut the ears off the cat and give him rabbit ears yes, instead. Yes, like a hairband, yeah. even on a person. Yeah, yeah, even on a person, yeah. Yeah, because we do, um, like, quite a lot of people moulds. Like yeah. Um, yeah, you've got the face mould. Mm -hmm, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. You can make not, I don't think I've ever seen that, actually, before. Oh, haven't you? No, I've probably. used that one. Um, no, like uh, the uh, ear mould. Oh, the ear like, moulds, like yeah, the I see what you mean, on, yeah. Um, yeah. On a face. Yeah, no, that would be a really good idea to do. So this one we're just going to fill with white, again just moving the paste around inside the mould, like so. They're so quick and easy to use and like I say these sugar button ones I absolutely love. So all I'm doing here is I'm just going to pinch the paste together just to move it along into that arm. Is it an arm? Is it a paw? Paw, I think. <laughs> okay. I don't know, is the paw the bit at the bottom or? <laughs> I'm not sure. I should have researched animals more than I <laughs> Intensive research and rabbits. Yes. <laughs> okay. So just making sure that the paste is really well into all the nooks and crannies. 
So do you ever roll on top of them? Because I've seen, um, I think, Noreen rolls a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, I think it's just personal preference, you can. Yeah. Sometimes I'll just use the flat of my hand and just give it a good press over. You can see I've got some brown on there, so it's got a nice brown bottom now. <laughs> okay, there we go. Again, just giving it a really good flex. Now this one is really quite a deep mould, so you need to give this one a really good flex to get all the bits out. There we go. So you can see he's almost jumping out there. And I mean, if you ever struggled, you could just pop him in the freezer, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. There he is. Got quite a surprised look on his face, popping out there with <laughs> no ears. There we go. So there's your rabbit. And then we're just going to add him some ears on. So again, just some small sausages of paste. I'm just going to make sure that there is corn flour in there. Okay, and then you could also put pink in the ears, couldn't you, if you wanted yeah, to? Yeah, you could. I'm going to dust with some pink dust right. to do the ears. And also the same on the feet as well. When it's really small pieces, I'll just show you on the feet. Oops. On these paws here at the bottom, you've got like the little... Um, foot pads, but with the really teeny tiny ones, if we were using coloured paste in those, it might get a little bit fiddly. Yeah. So you can either dust them or paint them. I just thought painting them sometimes gives too strong a colour as well, whereas the dust will give you a nice subtle effect. Okay. So just squashing that down, and then they should just pop straight out. I had that snicker. There we go. One and then the other one there. So you see he's going to have his two little ears just like that at the end. Oops, can't see him. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> so again you can stick the ears at all different kinds of angles to give him a different a different appearance really. So I'm going to move the rabbit out of the way because we'll dust him when we come to paint the other creatures, the other animals. And the last one to do is the lamb mould. Yes. Which is so cute, save the best till last perhaps. Yes. Yeah, it's a lamb mould, brand new, yep. it only came out um, on, well it was available on the website on Saturday. Yep. Um, so yeah, so Where you get this one free with every sugar buttons order for a special birthday yep. offer. That's fantastic. He's so cute. It could be a he, it could be a she. It could be. <laughs> so for this one I'm just going to do um, just some white sheep with a flesh coloured face and some flesh coloured feet but again you could do all different colours yeah um, so i know you've got some examples ones, of different yeah. colours i'll just grab this to show everyone so this one's got a bit of more of a brown face they're cute they are they are so they cute are lovely. you could do them with grey wool i don't know yeah as um, well. yeah there's you know you get black sheep so yeah. you can also do Black wool. Yeah. Or again, if you were doing a baby shower cake or a christening cake or yeah. a, a very young child's cake, you could um, use some nice pastel colours yeah, I mean, for them as well. It doesn't have to be a proper sheep. So like you do with the owl mould, you could do fantasy colours. It doesn't mm, have to be I'd realistic. I'd see all the rainbow, like, yeah. in a row. <laughs> rainbow lambs. That'd be so cute. So to do the face, we're just going to drop a ball of paste in there, just a small one. And just, oops, it's jumping out already. Let's add a little bit more there. But because the moulds are so detailed, you can see exactly where the face is, so you know exactly where your paste needs to start and stop. It's really good. Okay, let's give that a squish, add a little tiny bit more. Sometimes it's less is more. It's good to start small and then add a little bit extra too. Yeah, because I think it's it's harder to get rid of the excess than yes, it is. It is particularly know. when it's in the middle of the mould there. It's not so bad on the edges, but right in the middle, mm. you don't want it to mark where the wool is. So again, you can just make sure with your Dresden that it's well within where you want it to be and then just small amounts just for the feet at the bottom again holding it in place and then just using your finger to tease it in maybe add a little bit more one leg leg foot and then the other side and then we're just going to fill the rest with the white and I have another blooper Peter moment in a moment because <laughs> I've got some sheep that I made earlier as well. Okay, so squish the paste in. And these are so quick to do, the lambs. 
for the amount of detail that there is in the wall. from the mould and then just pop him out. Yeah, there he is. There he Ashy. is. <laughs> He's really cute. I love that one. Okay so what we're going to do with the sheep to add the eyes we're going to um, I've just got a really small ball tool and I'm just going to poke the eyes just make them a little tiny bit bigger and we're going to just drop a little bit of white paste in there. So I'm just going to run the ball tool in like that. Just make sure that his mouth's nice and open. He's looking really surprised. I don't know what he's seen. <laughs> okay, and then this is the challenge. Really, really tiny, tiny ball of white. That's probably even too big. So what I'm going to do is roll that into a little sausage and then just with a knife, just cut it in half. I've got me nervous. So, <laughs> knife on your hand. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> you could use a plastic knife at home. There we go. So really, really small balls of white paste and then just drop them into the eye sockets. Oops. Now if you struggle picking these up, you can use um, just a paintbrush with a tiny bit of water. just helps to pick it up a little bit. They are quite fiddly. There we go. You can see we've just got them in place there. And then I'm just going to really gently just flatten them a little bit without distorting the face. Okay, and then what we're going to do is with a little bit of black paint, we're just going to add the pupils on there. Okay, so that's all the moulds, all the animals made. Um, there is a way of making the sheep. I don't know if we've got time for that or do you want to do that at the end? The sheep? The, to make the sheep, the lamb, looking the other way. It's up to you. <laughs> I don't mind. Where are we for time? Do you want me to put all these on first and then show you that at the end? Yeah, sounds yeah. good, yeah. Okay. So I'll just wrap those bits of paste in the cling film. And then we'll do our little bit of painting and then if we have time I will show you how to make the lamb look the opposite direction. Okay, so we'll start with the lamb. All I'm going to do is add a little bit of black paint to his eyes. That's all we need to do for this one. So I've just got some liquid black. Um, to make the paints you can either oops, going everywhere. You can either use um, powder colours with a little bit of um, either clear alcohol or a little bit of rejuvenated spirits just mixed together. I find with the black it's really useful to use the ready mixed black colour because it gives a much better coverage than the, the dusts. The dusts I use for every other colour, just not that one. Okay, And I'm going to use a really small ball tool. These, um, I got them, I think they're for nail art. Right. These really little teeny tiny ones but they're really useful. For sugar craft again just make sure you're keeping it just for your cakes and don't use it on your nails as well <laughs> yeah okay and then all we're going to do a bit closer there just put a little dot of black just at the bottom of each eye okay and like i said i do have a range of sheep that i made earlier mm -hmm. Bleep, it's to, yeah let's bring those in and again these just need the pupils i've already done the eyes in the sockets there's the one looking the other way look yeah. So just really quickly add your little black dots for each of those. This is the bit I should have put my glasses on for. <laughs> yeah, they just totally just come to life a little bit. They people. do, it just makes such a difference. And like I say it's so easy with the little tiny ball tools. I would be lost without these. Oops, there we go. Okay, so that's the sheep done, or the lambs. Let's move those out of the way. And the next one we will do is while we've got the black, we'll do the dog. So what we're going to do with the dog is we're going to give him a little black nose, some black eyes, and we're going to paint the ears, the tail, and the paws in black as well. So while I've got my ball tool handy, I'm just going to pop a little dot. So did you eye. did you do the um, same there with the with eyes the white. with the lamb? To be honest, no, because the way that that one's done, you don't really need to. It's The hole isn't as deep as right, the lamb okay. one. Okay, so that one looks perfectly fine, just with the little black detail. And because I'm not the steadiest with small brushes, I'm just going to use my ball tool just to colour the end of the nose as well. Because that makes it easier. Okay, and then... Just move that over there. 
I don't paint anything else for a minute with that. So then we need a paintbrush. Let's that one. And we're going to paint the ears. Okay, so just painting it on to the white sugar paste. So how long have you um, let this one set to dry? Um, I made this one last night. So it's just set overnight. Right. But again, you could, you don't need to leave it that long. A um, couple of hours, maybe. But you wouldn't recommend doing it straight after? You can do, it's just that if... A um, wobbly, is it? it's, yeah, it's a bit wobbly. This one is quite firm now, so I can move it around more easily. Okay, so I'm just painting, making sure that you get underneath. But again, like I said with the cat, the way that the animals fare is it doesn't really matter if it goes over a little bit. You can just say that that's a spot. Yeah. <laughs> so it just depends if um, sometimes people worry about painting onto things because they're kind of worried that they haven't got a very steady hand or that they're going to go over the edges. Um, so this is ideal because, like I say, you can you could turn it into a Dalmatian. I have, yeah, someone has done that. Yeah, it wouldn't matter at all. With the dog. Okay, so then we're going to just do the tail. And black. You could leave the tip white if you wanted, so you had a white tip on his tail. And again, you see, if the paint was soft, if you was turning him over like this and painting the tail, it mm, would have yeah. a tendency probably to snap off. Okay, and then again, just his feet, his paws. You could also add a little collar if you wanted to. I think, yeah, we're going well. to do that next. All right. Um, I'm going to give him a little red collar, but I'm going to do that with a little bit of paste because I think you would notice if your hands were a bit shaky and you went off the line. Yeah. So I'm going to use paste for that one. But so these bits you can get away with because it's just a fair. There we go. So that's all his painted bits. And then I'll show you how to make the collar. So for the collar, we're just going to use a little bit of red. Um, this one, I've just used sugar paste. I haven't added any tile to this right. one. Um, I've wrapped this one really you won't well. be using a mould with this one? No, no. We're just going to run a, just roll a tiny little strip. So again, you only need just a small, small pea size, and it's going to roll it into a really thin sausage, and then just squash it down a little bit with your fingers, just to give it a flat appearance, like a collar. A uh, little bit of water, just around his neck. So mm. you can see the colour detail there, so you could easily paint that if you wanted to. And then just oops, add the sugar paste on. If it's not quite in the right place, you can just move it with your Dresden tool. So ideally, maybe let your paint dry before you, or add the colour first. That would have been a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and then just trim the excess off there. I guess you could also give the cat a little collar as well. You could give the cat a little collar, yeah. Although I don't think farm cats have collars. Probably not, <laughs> no. no. And then I'm just going to use a real tiny little amount of the um, orange that I used for the cat. So just a really teeny bit. Just into a little ball. And I'm just going to flatten it just for his little ID badge on his collar. Okay, so that's just going to a little bit of water. And again, like I say, you can pick it up with your water on your paintbrush and then just pop that in place and that's the dog finished I won't pick him up because he's a little bit wet still <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to push him over there and the next one we will do is we'll do the cat and now let me remember what did I do with the cat <laughs> so the cat's just got black in his eyes or hair eyes so just back to your little ball tool again okay a little bit of black. You could put some um, green or yellow in there as well if you wanted to for the cat's eyes. Just to add a bit more detail. Okay, and then this one's going to have a pink nose. So I've just got a little bit of dusky pink um, petal dust. Just move that down so you can see. There, it's got a little bit of pink dust in here. So what dust? What brand is that one? Um, I think it's Sugar Flare, but it's just like um, a dusky pink. Right. And I'm just going to really carefully just dust his nose. Like so. You could put a little bit on his um, cheeks as well if you wanted. If you've got a little bit too much on your brush, just dab it off on your hand, just take off some excess. 
I'm going to give him some pink cheeks. Oh, very cute. I think so. I've seen, um, I think someone give the lamb rosy cheeks as well. Yeah, you could give the sweet. lamb. The rabbit looks really nice with rosy cheeks as well. So that's all we're going to do with the cat. And then talking of the rabbit, well, we've got the pink brush in our hands. Okay, a little bit, dab off the excess. And we're just going to, if you can see on the rabbit's ears, you can just see the dark, the um, deep crevice there in the middle. We're just going to dust the pink inside, just like so. And the same on this ear. And then again, we're going to give him um, a pink nose. Got lots of pink in that one. <laughs> I'll just add a bit more pink in the other to match it up, I think. Once his ears are going to look a little bit odd. Again, really important to tap off the excess, don't get carried away. Okay, so a little bit more just for his nose and his cheeks and again we're going to do the um, the foot pads as well. Oh, we've got the pink. So again you can see, hold it up a bit closer, you can see these uh, are starting to firm up already mm -hmm. from what we've done. Um, so we're just going to dust just with the pink and just catch, because the rays don't, you can just catch the tops of them you don't have to worry about the sides. Just catch the tops with a little bit of dust. Just brings out the detail, doesn't it? Yeah. In the mould. It does. And they are they're full of detail, these moulds, all of them. There we go. Okay. And then just a little black dot in the eyes again. Again, if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of um, the white in first. I'm just going to pop in a little bit of white, a little bit of black in there. So that's the rabbit finished and then the last one to finish off is just the owl so again I'm going to use some yellow this time I'm just going to use a, gel, uh, a yellow gel colour um, I'm not going to mix up a dust for this one and all I'm going to do let me find my little brush is that one um, I could use that one <laughs> I had a really fine one somewhere I'm a really messy worker I'll try it on there I think I need to find one just one second I have some spares with me, so it's okay. Right. So all I'm going to do is just dab the brush. Because if you use these gel colours, you'll know they are really messy. Mm -hmm. And you do always get a little bit that comes out of the top. Yeah, so I'm going to take yeah. advantage of that, and I'm just going to run my brush along it, just to pick up a little bit of yellow, because we don't want too much. Yes, I find if you ever try and squeeze it into something, yeah, you end up with like yeah. 10 times they more are, than you want it. They're really good, but they are very, very messy to use. Okay, and then I'm just going to give him some yellow eyes. Okay, so it's really carefully round. Just following the um, the detail on the mould, so it's so easy to paint them, because you can see exactly where you need to be. Okay. You could use orange, or any other colour if you wanted. And then again, we're just going to use the ball tool just to add the black. And instead of just a... We could just do a few dots going round just to make the dot a bit bigger if that makes sense. So we're not looking for, like with the other animals, we only used a tiny dot of colour, but the owl's eyes are much bigger. So I'm just going to go around like that. And there's the eyes for the owl. Okay. So that's all the animals ready now to fix onto the cake. So to fix them on, I'm going to use a little bit of piping gel this time. Okay, just because the animals have been setting for a little bit longer um, and the water is not quite as sticky. Yeah. So I'm going to use a little bit of piping gel just to give it that bit more stick. Really. And where's this piping gel from? Is it just... It's, um, I think you get lots of different brands. I just ordered it just most cake places, sell it at cake shops or online retailers. Um, you can get them from lots and lots of different places. Very relatively available. So really carefully, without smudging the eyes, I'm just going to attach a little bit of piping gel onto the back of the owl. I guess you'd probably wait until the eyes are dried, would you normally? You would normally, yes. And then you need to choose where you're going to put him on the branch. Those branches are quite high, so you could sit on the lower branch here. And then we'll just pop him on. Okay, just hold him in place for a few seconds, just to make sure that he's not going to fall off. His tree. So I guess you could just make a family, couldn't you? Yeah, you could, you wanted to. absolutely. Yeah, there we go. Hopefully he's stuck. And then we're going to add the other animals. So we can add the cat next. So the cat is going to be watching the owl. So 
see what he's doing. <laughs> so a little bit of piping gel again just on the back. Not too much or else he'll slip and slide everywhere. And then we'll just add the cat under the tree where the owl is. I think he's just waiting for him to fall off his perch. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a found cat. Absolutely. So there's the cat on there. And then we're going to add some of the, we'll add the dog. The dog's going to sit over near the gate, um, near the fence. So again, at home, you would wait and make sure that he's completely dry. I'm just going to hold him by his cheeks there. A bit of piping gel. You could also use while icing if you wanted to. I just find it easier because I always have piping gel around. And you can also put a little bit of piping gel just underneath as well, just where he's sitting onto the cake. And we'll pop him next to the fence. Watching, garden. Yep. Yeah. Waiting for all the sheep to come. Yes. There we go. And then the rabbit. I'm going to pop the rabbit over at this side. Like I guess it doesn't really matter where you put the animals, you can choose to put them anywhere. So, piping gel. There he goes, like this. You can always bend the arms a little bit like this, so that he's kind of sitting off the cake. He doesn't mm -hmm. actually have to be sitting flat onto the cake. Pop him like that, and then pop his little ears on. Again, a bit of piping gel, and then the ears in place, that's one. And then this is the one that's really pink. If you were worried that you'd put too much dust on, you could always use um, a little bit of water on um, a cotton bud or a paint, clean paintbrush and just wipe it off and then mm -hmm. wait for it to dry and then redust. So you could have one of the ears sticking off a little bit like that. So there's your rabbit. And then it just leaves the sheep. So I'm going to the little lambs. So we'll pop all the lambs on. You can make as many lambs as you want. I got carried away on the last one and made loads. <laughs> ah, so cute though. I mean, I guess lambs come in large numbers. Yeah. Well, and sheep, like I yeah. said, they're, they're so quick and easy to make that you can just get carried away and do as many yes. as you want. You don't have to stick to just one or two. So on that cake, I've grouped them together in threes, but I could pop a couple like this. And then maybe another one in front of them. So again, if you're standing it away from the cake, so these ones have stuck quite well because um, the back of the lamb is touching the cake. But with this one, it's going to be standing more on the board. So again, just a little bit of your piping gel or edible glue or um, royal icing, whichever you're using, just on his, the bottom of his feet, just helps to secure him in place. So you can go here. And then we can maybe put some sheep up on the top. I mean, there's so many more moulds that you could use to in this mix here as well. Absolutely. Okay, so that's this one. So he could just be a lost sheep on his own. <laughs> that makes me quite sad. <laughs> it's not real, Katie. Man. Oh, no. <laughs> when I was um, younger, when I, I grew up on a farm, um, and it was a pig farm, but we had... Saying? Yeah, 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 I grew up on a pig farm. Yeah, um, <laughs> and we had uh, a pet sheep. <laughs> Did the you idea with the with the pigs. No, no. no. Um, it was one where I think its mum had, I don't know whether it had died or oh disowned gosh. the lamb. I don't know what had happened, but this poor stray lamb needed a mum. Yes, um, that happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. So that's what we did, and um, my mum kept him. So we kept him as a pet. Cute. There we go. So as I say, you could carry on adding lambs to your heart's content, really. You could add as many as you wanted. Yes, you really could. Yeah, so there we go. Yeah. All finished. I see, well, you could just keep going and going, and you, you could, could add details all the way around the back as well um, to make a really fun, easy cake. Yeah. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, so it is Sugar Buttons Week, and the lamb mould is available as a free gift, and it runs out on Sunday. So, oh, and 10% off as well, which is an extra bonus. Absolutely. So, yeah, thanks again for everyone for watching. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks Bye. for having me. Yeah, Bye. thank you.